Welcome back to week two of ESE Collegiate Esports for the Overwatch 2 game. I'm Kavanaugh Frank along with my co-host Addison. Addison. And today, who are we playing? Well, we're going to be playing against uh, NKU Esports. It's definitely going to be an interesting game uh, right after our first week with Buffalo. I was really surprised about that. And so far from what I'm seeing, what we predict, it should be a fairly simple game. I don't know for sure. Hey, I mean, big, big, uh, big one. My baseball coach, you say big trap game. If you come into a game thinking you're just going to swipe a team, it's like, really, that's the game you got to be worried about the most. That's why it's called a trap so much. Got to the point he used trap games so much, it just became more of a joke than anything else. But I believe that tonight might be a trap game for High University and just something to look out for. I believe they're pretty confident in their abilities, as they should be. But sometimes overconfidence can be a person's downfall. The yeah, definitely with this. I mean, we're only a couple couple games for each team at most so it could really depend with how we go through this week by week nice. i mean especially with these teams not having so much training uh as we go on we could definitely see some flips we could and speaking of week by week we're gonna check out the schedule real quick a little pre-warning um i can i know basic information about these teams i can remember them from when i uh, casted valorant myself but um it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. It's week two, right? We, we watched one game. I could tell you, oh, Miami's bad because they lost, right? But that that's not giving them a fair evaluation of how their team is. I don't have the time to go through and watch each VOD and really see how these teams play and how they are. So it is week two. Um, you know, uh, we just have to see in the rest of the week how they're going to be. Uh, always someone to look, look out for. Northeastern, pretty good in Valorant. I think they have a pretty good esports program themselves. Put a lot of money and time into that. Akron, I've heard, is supposed to be pretty good. I believe they also have a pretty decent esports program as well. Um, I believe Ball State is another name I've been uh, hearing tossed around by the uh, team behind me that uh, someone to look out for, especially. Um, I believe that's the three teams. Our con might be top dogs on with Ohio Esports. I think we have a pretty good team out there tonight. But um, is there anything to say about these teams? you know anything about them? I mean, all things considered, uh, from what we played against, I mean, U Buffalo Esports is going to go against Miami, and from what I heard, Miami lost this last game. Uh, last that is week. correct. I cannot tell you who they played against, but they did lose. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting. I mean, both teams have lost, so it should be a pretty even fight. I mean, all things considered, but... Uh, exactly what I was saying. All, they both lost one game, right? B yeah. Big deal. A lot of stuff can happen in this, so we'll just have to see. But I mean... You you make a great point. If we go by purely the analytical, then yeah, it's def it's fair. But all things considered, it will definitely be a fun game to watch, uh, especially off of this uh, Ohio esports and NKU. So we'll see. That is true. But Overwatch Two recently had a big patch drop. Recently, we've now had a week to kind of sit down and digest each of the characters, each of the heroes' um, new changes, and how the like minuscule timing of each thing changes. And Addison, I believe you're going to talk about that for a little bit. Kind of give us the inside scoop of who we'll see. Obviously, Hog got nerfed pretty hard. Sojourn got nerfed. <laughs> yeah. Kiri code got nerfed in a way that you shouldn't have been there. Should, but I'm not going to talk too much. I'm going to let my, my boy Addison take care of that right now. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, so far from what we've seen, and I've tried to play as many games as Overwatch as I could in the last week, but we've seen that Hog has really taken a step back from what he used to be. Uh, originally, or at least in Overwatch 2, Hog was definitely one of those characters that could go out on his own and take out characters on his own. He was definitely a solo play tank. You did not have to worry about your DPS or your support for Hog. Uh, with this new debuff, he's definitely brought back into the team game. Uh, you can no longer just run off on your own and try to snipe uh, characters. You can't hook them anymore, hook snipe, uh, and you really can't just rely on yourself. So what? I'm gonna stop you real quick. I'm sorry. Addison, can you explain just a slight tweak and like a, give me the 10 second breakdown of what happened to Hog, please? So Thank you. basically. When Hog hooks now, it's going to be further away when he brings them in. So originally, he would you would be like right in front of Hog when you were hooked. Now you've got a little bit of space, and also I believe his damage was uh, lower. His, his damage propel was lower slightly. So there yeah. it is, if for a full health target, unable to one shot. And yeah, so it, it gives you enough time to run away. Uh, for characters like Moira that have the ability to uh, move away without taking damage uh, as abilities, it's very simple to run away from Hog now, and it forces him back to play with his DPS. From mm -hmm. what I've seen in games right now, we'll see Hog with his DPS running around together. Support's still there in the back, of course, yeah, doing their thing, yeah, yeah. but now he's re like he's required to play with his DPS. There's yeah. no way to He's not just a one-man army that we've seen the past season of Hog play, where just, here's Hog. Go at him, buddy, and he just—he's just successful that way, and that's just not how a uh, hero should be in this game. So I, I think the nerf was there; it needed to be done. And I think, honestly, I think they did a pretty good job with how they did it. I think—I yeah. think the solution that they came up with is pretty good. I think 
I think a good hog player could still make hog pretty good, but he's not going to be the, the point and click adventure that he was before this nerf. Yeah, I completely agree. Originally, it was more of a solo, which made a good hog player great, but now he's just brought back into the team atmosphere. So it's definitely a good balance and fair, and it doesn't take away from hog either. You can still play him effectively. That's right. And the thing about Hog now we're going to have to look out for, um, they call him a, a displacement tank, really. He's using to use his hook and put someone in a bad position. So now he's not going to be able to one-shot, but he's able to take your Ana, who, who's a little too close, a little, or he's not hugging the corner too much. He's going to be able to take her and bring him to his team, right? So well, he can bring her down, maybe 40 health, but he's going to have to rely on a DPS to uh, finish up the job. And that's what Addison was talking about, of the fact that his supports are going to have to be there. Not his supports and DPS, I'm sorry. They will both have to be there with him to really make this uh, a successful hook. And this brings in more to the team atmosphere of what you were mentioning. It's just yeah, making it more of a coordination. Hey, I'm hooking here. Let's make sure we're going to finish off this kill. Yeah, I completely agree with you. If we want to talk about other characters that have also been debuffed, we had Sojourn lightly go down. Uh, it's definitely with his, yeah, the charge. But besides <laughs> that... I have seen Sojourn stay in the meta. Um, uh, she, usually no, you see it in the meta. She's, yep. she's going to be in. I believe we'll see uh, Kuna. He'll be probably on the Sojourn no matter what, I think. Yep. Just with good aim, with good patience, and her movement ability, that, that slide, underrated part of her kit that no one really talks about, that is a big part that makes her so good. And I think, I think honestly, they should have done something about that. Uh, in the nerf, they didn't. So that just, honestly, I think that right now is keeping her in the meta and keeping her to be as good as she really is. Yeah, the slide is definitely an interesting ability. It's kind of out of the box for your usual Overwatch character. I mean, we don't, of course, each individ in ability is individual. That is true, but yeah. For a slide, especially for Sojourn, which is a character that can also play close up and far away with that laser, mm -hmm. it's definitely interesting. It can give you that space or it can give you that close range fight. Exactly. The last major, the last major nerf, right, is the, the nerfs that come around to, in this uh, patch was um, Kiriko, a big thing. She was in the meta one because of that Suzu. Did not get, didn't get touched. We talked about this last week. It did not get touched, and that's what's making her so good. It takes away every single debuff and with an immortality. It, it's just so good. It can cancel ults. It can cancel antis, which were big when Hog was so to meta, meta. And that just honestly took Ana almost out of the game because it just completely destroyed Ana's kit. And Ana's still not meta, uh, still not even really playable because of how Kiriko is and how almost she's always insta locked, at least by how university she is. We are going to be loading in the map soon. It will be Ilios first. Control point always starts first. I'm just going to keep talking a little bit about this Kiriko and how, um, I don't know, because anti was a big way to get rid of Hog. Yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, was. Kiriko's anti ability was, <laughs> it, it's still amazing. I mean, Ana is basically useless compared to that anti. Uh, fire from Ash and there's dynamite. That's completely uh, voided. It's just really good. It just takes away every debuff and it's just so good. And that's what you see right there. We do have a substitute for Ohio University coming in. Um, supports, we have we had three supports coming in after the tryout match. We had Lando, Water, and Slowo. Tonight we're taking out Water and putting in Lando. Um, nothing to say against Water. He played, I think, pretty good in this first map. The first match is just week two. I think the coaches are trying to put whoever in. Kind of see how the team gels together, see who plays best with who, who plays with best with what characters, and he picks, picks Kiriko, right? That's just to be almost an insta-lock there. Crazy Man G. Using the ball, going immediately off. Oh my god, he gets a junk right immediately on that backline. Reaper in a 1v1 from there. Almost brought down with a Wraith. He's going to be run away, but he does not have enough room to get the kill. As Kuna knows that and gets him. Crazy Man G, Andy in the back right there, along with the Lucio. Lucio's not going to be able to do too much healing against that, but he's able to just run away as far as he can. Slowo just taking his time, not trying to get picked off. Brings him right in, goes for the Ana. Ana goes down pretty quickly. Akusola does go down to a headshot from that Kirito. That Those knives do a lot of quick damage. Point go, does go to high inverse first time. Kuna's just stand up on there, charging off the tank. This is what you'll see a lot. Sojourn charging their charge off the tank right there. Firing the tank, not really trying to get the damage, but just trying to get the charge so we can take off a squishy. Reaper just trying to get the point away from High University, unable to do so as a uh, High University team there. He's once again really low in that wraith, and he's just getting chased down by Crazy Man Juke, who is just so good with the movement abilities of Ball. Lucio trying to fill off the damage. Slowo just really going through that immor immortality. They were trying to do too much, but unable to as Amari finally goes down. Here we go. And Ana by herself. Tries to get to sleep as last ever to live. Crazy Man G immediately gets hacked. They switch it. Um, Sombra pretty fast. So they saw that. That was some success in that first match, match for uh, um, the opposing team in High University. Kind yeah, that was showed. definitely one hell of a fight. It was really good, and we saw some really good team play from Ohio. Uh, definitely, we're starting to see some of the alts starting to come close or come out, and I wouldn't be surprised if this next fight we start to see them. Uh, seeing them mostly from a high university, uh, a Northern Kentucky University didn't have a lot of chance to really build or uh, farm alt that fight. We'll, we'll just have to see where high university wants to use it. Lando in a pretty bad position, able to get out of it there. Akusora tries to use the tracer bomb, not get too much 
Two, two picks already for I University. I University just showing almost complete dominance so far. As Northern Kentucky brought themselves into a room. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. They really tried to go for that room fight, which Ramacha it, it can be pretty good if he gets out his uh, fist ability. But I was surprised Nemesis that didn't work for him. Good. Yeah, Nemesis form. I just think uh, High University is just showing him a pure dominance in this first fight so far. I don't think a single pick's been lost. Slowo has just been playing really aggressive. Crazy Man Geo immediately gets a sneaky squid from assist from the Lucio. He's just going so far. I thought I was going to see that mine all come out from him. Northern Kentucky bringing out Slippy switches immediately right to the uh, May. Maybe he didn't think Sombra was his character. Lando playing really aggressive with uh, Kiriko right now. I think I don't know if that's just because how he plays or how he thinks the other team is um, the skill that he's playing right now. A lot of alts coming out from both teams right now, so, but it's just not enough as almost immediately Northern Kentucky goes down. Soldier just trying to run and get some health, but he's only able too much. First map, first, first just point getting started. this map goes to High University. Pure dominance. That's that is that is all I could say about that map. Yeah, I'm University really surprised. Was playing pretty loose, pretty fun. They definitely were. Um, I don't want to say they were definitely aggressive. And I, yeah, I, I think, agree. I think they could be aggressive. They had, they had every reason to. They were playing really good. Crazy man, she switches to the hog. We'll have to see how that one goes off the ball almost immediately. Well, it's known that Ohio can definitely play as a team, and I think that Hog would definitely be a good complement to this. And last something? map especially, they were definitely playing fluid. So I wouldn't be surprised if that is starting to change, especially since this point is definitely concentrated, and they'll have a lot of corners to hide behind now, so ball won't work as well. Just what you're saying with how good of a team Ohio University plays and how they play as a team, and what you're saying is a big thing for the coaching staff of communication for Ohio University and making sure that they call out who they want to get, who they want to shoot at, and what abilities they're going to use where. Right? It's all about talk back there. And just how they're able to communicate together. But it looks like we have Akusora back on the Tracer. Immediately just going there. Somehow Risa's already at half health. I don't know who's been putting damage in her. He's already in the back line right there. The Hanzo is just unable to go to the reach. Kuna on the Widow. Amelia almost brings down a Risa full, down from full health. Lucio fully in the back line. Just 1v2ing two tanks right Two supports right now. I'm sorry. It's Almost another definitely clean surprising fight. There's what you see right there. Hog does. Hog gets the hook, but unable to really get that one shot as Amari was able to just kind of slip away using Suzu. Yep. He, she is just being tormented by this team right now. Pushed down by Slowo. Finished off by Crazy Man G. Yep, and Ohio has the point now, so we're going to see how they hold it. Definitely seems like they're starting to keep them back this on pure. This is uh, dominant right now. You don't. I don't think you really see Ohio University playing in someone's spawn door like they are right now, but I think they. I think they felt out the team that they're playing right now, and I think they realize that they can be doing this. And Puna finally goes down. Lucky, not lucky, but a headshot by Sneaky Squid. First pick for Northern Kentucky University. Arkansas is really in the back line right now. Northern Kentucky is playing really grouped up, but I think that's honestly might be a curse at the moment. Dude, yeah, it's definitely really interesting. It's definitely interesting. They're playing really grouped up, but they're just kind of like walking all together into a fire range, almost always leaving their tank to take the final shot. Nope. Yeah. Team kill for Ohio University. Well, I think the only reason they're playing so much together is because they're trying to get some picks as a group and also because they're trying to just stay with their healing. Uh, it's definitely hard to play against a team like Ohio University where they're pretty much all around you all the time. That's right, especially with having, having your main take be someone who uh, is, just, is just almost always on their own playing maining ball. That is, like, you really don't see the plane behind your tank that uh, Northern Kentucky has been doing. It looks like now they're trying to go a little bit different, but Akusor is trying to get out of there. Yeah, I don't think we should call this dive necessarily, but it's definitely interesting with the Winston pick. With the Winston pick, the Winston does go down. Oh, you, Crazy Man G was, was anti using that thing. Slowo does go down to another headshot by Sneaky Squid. Sneaky Squid's the only one to get killed for the Northern Kentucky team. As you see right there, Akusora almost misses the Ana right next to him. Yeah, if we look at our alt charge right now, though, I don't think Ohio will struggle to get back to this point. We almost have every alt possible, so Ohio it's definitely going to be at the point, and I believe they'll be able to hold this point for the rest of the time, especially if it's how yeah, far back. If the point did fall, then it would be easy. Yeah. Exactly. Pulse Bomb does go out. I believe it already went off. No kill, but just so many ults going out. It looks like Kitsune Rush is going out. Slippy does go down. Looks like Ohio University will take this first map with relative ease with only two kills going down, both with Hanzo headshots. Um, it was definitely an interesting map, yeah. <laughs> interesting is one word to say. This, um, I would say disheartening. Disheartening for an interesting game. Just making, yeah. making our jobs a little harder going to um, try and talk about what to say. Because yeah. you just see pure dominance, pure... I mean, you get you get you get two kills lost from Ohio University. What was there talk about? Oh man, they could have could have hit their shots a little better, right? Yeah, well, they didn't let up a single percent. It's mm -hmm. like wow. Um, 
hey, like, really great job by Ohio University, really dominant against Northern Kentucky. Um, well, yeah, it was a definitely definitely good map. Uh, we saw the switch up a little bit from Ball. I mean, that first map, we definitely had a more fluid team. Uh, they were kind of all over the place, constantly moving, constantly going, which I think really interrupted uh, NKU's team. I think that uh, is goal. just a c contribution, especially to uh, having your tank beat Ball, is you got to be yeah. fluid. you got to be able to survive on your own, able to get picks on your own, because you're not going to be having a tank really trying to protect you. Yeah, I agree. And especially with that second map, we saw that switch up to Hog, uh, and we saw he really played well with the rest of the team. Uh, like we were talking about how that uh, debuff happened, Hog definitely played well with the team, and we saw that Ohio really adapted to that. Yeah, I believe so too. Ohio University is just good at, at playing as a team, and it's going to be something that I hope they're always going to get continue to get better at, being making the call that they do almost subconsciously while not having to think about it, just playing the game and shouting out what they see. But I believe we do have a five-minute break, Addison. Do you have any final words about this first map on Ilios? Uh, just that I'm really hoping that we can keep up this momentum. It's great to hear. I would hope we do, too. Yeah. NKU Esports game for Overwatch. I am Addison. And I'm Kavanaugh. And we are back after a dominant first map win for Ohio University on Ilios. It was not much. Uh, there's not much to say, right? You see, you see a 60 to 63 to 0 high school football game. And you're like, wow. Well, I guess that was rough. But that that's pretty much what we were seeing here. It was just pure Ohio University the entire way. In just Northern Kentucky really struggled. They got two picks the entire time for both uh, for both control points on Il on Ilios, and they just they got two, two head, one headshot for um, I didn't believe Kuna, one headshot headshot for Akusora, yep. and that was all she wrote for NKU on that first map. That was definitely surprising. I mean, we expected a somewhat uh, simpler game, but definitely not something like this. But I mean, Ohio definitely did play well as a team, so I'm not too surprised. They did play very well, and there's nothing to be surprised about. That we do feel a really good uh, Overwatch team. I don't know why I struggled to get that out so much. We do feel a really good team, and it's always fun to watch them play. But it's always fun to watch them play, but it'd be better to watch them play a competitive game. Like yeah. A, like a back and forth, like a man. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Like, yeah, it's... I completely get what you mean. It would definitely be fun to see our team pulling out all the stops and going to their absolute hardest exactly. to win. But at the same time, I would take the win for Ohio. You take a win, exactly. Put put a put a tally in that W column. Let's move on next week. And I think that mm, I don't want I don't want to call it too early. I think that might be what we have to do. Yeah. <laughs> what if you do again? Thank you. You know. Yeah, it's definitely something. Yeah, and um, we did. I did did uh, hear and I did watch a little bit about NKU. They do kind of switch off, like not player wise, but role wise. Like sometimes the DPS will go to support or support to go to tank. I'm not quite sure how they do it. I don't know if they like if they had too many tank players and they're like, all right, well, I'll play tank one map. You play tank the next to try to keep everyone happy, or maybe people play tank better on control point or. I'm not quite sure. All I know is you might see a name that was playing a DPS like Slippy, and he might be playing support now. Yeah, it's definitely a fluid team where they can kind of play each other's roles. Uh, it's definitely useful as a strategy because you'll get used to seeing one name with one character role. Like you would see, you know, Ren Rion does DPS it, or something it, like that. It would kind of help against like um, playing against playstyles, right? Because you wouldn't know who's going to be playing on what uh, role and what map. So it'd kind of be harder for opposing teams to like kind of plan against. Yeah, but. I don't see many teams having to plan against Northern Kentucky University. I, I, I feel really bad saying that, but I like as a t like I feel like a lot of teams, or at least some teams, could just go in and be like, "All right, we're playing NKU, let's just go play our game. We'll get out. We'll get out quick. Just stuff like that." So I think it, I think it's a good strategy. I think in theory, it's a good way to go, but in practice, uh, as I'm seeing right now, it is not the best. If you kind of get what I'm saying. Yeah, it'll be remain to be seen if that actually does turn out to be a really good strategy or not. But uh, it looks like we're on Icon right now. Going right back to spawn, maybe switching off the ball. Oh, yeah, we're going pulling back out the hog. Pulling back out uh, the hog, giving Lucio, the, giving him the pickup, try to get there before the yeah. round starts. And if you're a first time viewer to Overwatch, Eichenwald is going to have a first control point, and then we're going to move on to an actual payload. They're going to have to push Three, the end. Two, uh, Esports for one, Overwatch is pushing the ESC. Starts in control incoming. point, goes to hybrid, then goes to push. It's going to stay like that for each week. I can what we call hybrid. It looks like we're kind of doing a pharmacy, except for the echo right there. Slippy, as I was talking about, was on DPS for the first, but now he's on Ramatra or Ram. Ooh, yeah, it's definitely a, interesting. It looks like a tank and some fire right Lando now. is right behind. Looks like our, he's trying to do a little bit of a, a little bit of a flank right there. Unable to, unable to get, the, able to get the headshot right on there. Lucio just flying fly in right there. Yeah, it's almost definitely going through those back lines, and I think they're going to try to pick off the mercy before she can get back to spawn. Yep, and that looks like the full team. Almost a team wipe. Looks like someone spawned in just before the uh, got the final kill there. Yep, looks like they're back to uh, this choke. Lucas is begging his team to try to get back to the choke. Yeah, like they're finally on the back. And oh, here we go. A little Kiriko 1v1. Kiriko 1. Kiriko's knife does so much headshot damage. It, it took two knives to kill the other Kiriko. Yeah, that's definitely something else, uh, especially with those headshots. It's just crazy. Looks like we got a little bit of junk bombs going in there to try and take out or get a pick off the other team, but it looks like they're really holding them down to this choke point. That is true. Junkrat is just such a good... I remember talking last week. Uh, Eichenwald is almost Junkrat's map of how many like tight areas there are, and I was able to really hold down a point. It is going to be a little bit of a problem for him as he's playing against an Echo, who is a flying. It's pretty fun for uh, Junkrat to hit his bombs there. Crazy Man G just going right in there. Yeah, it looks like they took out the Ramatra early on, and now the rest of the team's kind of trying to work to take out those last remnants. So, well, definitely doesn't look like they're struggling too much. You see the first ultimate on the board for both teams with Maka Store, the Rift Tire. Wonder if we'll ever see that out, if it ever needs to come out with just how Ohio University is playing right now. I yeah. do not think we would need it, but might pull it out just to make it life a little easier for him. That is a good, good example of how Hog will be playing now. If you saw, he dragged Ramatra from the corner. Close towards his team, body blocked him, set a pick on him, and was just let Kuna go to town, hitting headshots, getting charged, getting the kill. That is how like we saw oh, Crazy Man G ran in there for the last couple of kills. But yeah, I completely agree. Go back to what you were saying earlier. <laughs> that is how Hog will be played now, sticking around corners, dragging them towards a the corner, and having the team finish it off, just like Addison was talking about beforehand. Yeah, and it looks like we're basically holding them in their spawn, or very close to it. And Ohio University is pulling what they did last game, where they try to save up most of their alts, and then uh, in case the team does get too close to capturing that point. So, we'll see. We will see it for sure. But Ohio University used about two alts there, Kunas and Crazy Man Gs, to get themselves a team kill. Minute and a half left for this first point. I would be very surprised if I see a point capture here. I would, might be interested in seeing if there's a C9 coming from them if someone wants to switch to Lucio for Northern Kentucky and try to get out for them. 
I mean, that or we could see a Sombra coming out to try and go yeah, around. That's true. Sombra is another one who could back cap if needed be. Another Sneaky Squig is himself a third pick of the map, getting another headshot on Akusora. Both Kachine rushes go out. Uh, Slippy does use his ultimate. Able to get off Kuno, who's probably a little low from the first fight already. Yep. And as we were talking about, we do see a back cap, but it is from Echo, who probably used her ability to fly above. Slowbo really low as she fights it. Able to get there with Kiriko to help him save yep. life. And it looks like we have some respawns, and then Ohio Universe will be back to it. Again, they're holding up this choke point really well, and it looks like that uh, Echo going around the back cap was kind of almost a last-ditch last effort. It but is, I'm not the back cap. I'm with the that is true. I, I feel like you're you're getting right in your spawn door. Let's get Sombra. I know I know Lucio has a pretty good rollout for Eichenwald as well, but I, you have to wonder if that Diva is about another headshot for Sneaky Squiz. He pulls the second of the game. Yep. Well, if Diva have is picked for all. Well. Maybe the uh, the flying over. You can fly over that first building and get the point there. Yeah, it looks like we have Lando in the back lines. That's Mr. Harsey right now. And this, oh, looks like we have another one down. And it looks Green like Man G goes down for the first time. Ohio University just B drop just trying to save who we can. Looks like we might be going to overtime here, but it looks like NKU couldn't get there. They had a pick on the on the tank. Pretty good, a pretty substantial pick. Just Ohio uh, University is able to just kind of sit there and wait. As round one complete from NKU, zero points. High University only has to get, I believe, if it's like competitive, the first tick of the control point part of this hyper map, and they will win this map. And it will probably be a record for how quick a map's gone. <laughs> or maybe how quick a game's gone. It's definitely that been true. Something. We might be here, out of here quick. Yeah, I've been saves you a lot of time. You can go watch some other games. But, yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah, I was definitely interested in that match. Uh, usually when you have that choke point, you play a little bit more uh, down, like you would see a Torb come out or maybe something like that, get some turrets. But uh, honestly, they, they almost motion. abandoned the choke point that they were really playing at and just w opting to play at NKU spawn door, just staying yeah. right there. And uh, I think that's just going to show how Domino OU's been in this game, not even using a choke, which is usually just so vital to this game and how positioning works, opting to go for arguably worse position, but just able to still just go hard in the paint against them. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Usually that choke point for any um, main, like, even fight, you would have that locked down. But uh, playing this close to their spawn definitely shows you how Ohio University is having a slightly easier time. Oh, you picking up a couple people, a couple heroes not quite seen, really showing off the hero pools that each person can play. Slow up, going on the Ana. Um, haven't seen a lot of Kiriko from the other team. I think he's finally trying to pull out the Ana. Crazy Man G on Winston. I don't think I've ever seen him play Winston in scrims. Lando on Kiri, not even leaving that. Akusora on Farah. I've never seen him play Farah. I'll be really interested to see how this team plays right now. Sleep yeah, on that. That is that soldier just down. got. Yeah, that's a good pick to go off of. And this looks a great like... sleep by Slow. -O. Looks like there might be another one on the Genji as he brought down the definite low health by. Yep. And there Farah he is. Takes out the next, and then that's Mercy. That's three picks, two picks for Kuna so far. Can, we get, can yeah, he get a like third? He does get a third right there. And it looks like Ohio University will get this point pretty quick once Baby Diva goes down. Maybe. Kuna hit a shot. There we are. Akusora gets the kill. Oh! Kuna almost hits the clip on Genji. Ohio University only if they even one on. Letting the most time go down as Genji can't make it to point on time. Ohio University wins map two in almost land speed times. Man. Yeah. That's definitely something else. I mean, uh, that was just a great attack of OU. Kuna able to get three picks on the Mercy, the Ana, and I believe one other I can't remember. Just, just got the picks, and that's all you need. You, when you only need one one tick, you just need to go in there, win one fight, and you almost had it, and that's what you just kind of saw there. OU's really flexing. I, no one's really playing their main right now. I mean, Kuna definitely has played Widowmaker before in the past. I, I've been told that by him himself. But I don't think if, I don't know um, Akusora's affiliations with Farah. So, and I don't know Crazy Man's on Winston either. I, I think just trying to make this game more enjoyable for themselves. They'll, they'll find out what they can do. Maybe they're using it more of a test to really try to see what they can do and what they can do successfully against another team in this ESC competition. And I think that's kind of what we saw there for Icon One. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. It's something else. Uh, Winston's usually used for that disruption factor, running back into the back lines and then just messing them up. But uh, we're definitely seeing uh, Winston was used kind of more frontline almost. Uh, he was up in the beginning, and then after a little while, he used that jump to pick off some other characters. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think we will be going back to another five minute break. It's almost like it's like felt like we just left you guys, but I think we might be leaving again. Uh, I believe so. Uh, uh wait. Hmm? Actually, I think I just got the cue that we will not be going on break. So, all right, that's our bad. Granted, <laughs> usually we'd go on break now. Yeah. Usually, I think. Both teams kind of have already kind of really predicted the outcome of this game. Realize, all right, 
we know what's going to happen. Let's just try to get this on a roll so we can just kind of get to other things in our night or just stop the suffering that NKU may be feeling at the current moment. Yep, looks like we're going back in, but uh, that, was, that was definitely something uh, showing the fact of no break. They're either trying to go for the shortest uh, game that is in true. history or that is true. They just opting don't need out of the second break will definitely help on their world record for shortest game played in the Overwatch 2 ESC competition. Yep, that's definitely something. Well, it looks like the map that was chosen was Route 66. Uh, if we talk a little bit about this, it's a push map like we were talking about earlier. Yes, uh, yes. Payload will be there right in the beginning, and then the goal is to get through three different points to finish it off. Yeah, true. I think Payload, Payload probably has a chance to be the longest map of all three just because you actually do have to traverse the entire map. It's not like it's not like Control where you just get the point. You could just wait the 100 seconds and call it a day for the point percentage. Let's yeah, see what we got here. Oh, high anniversary really going back on the flex right now. Slow on the Ana, Crazy Man G on the Doom, Lando on the Zen, Kuna on the Sim, Akusora on the Bastion. Definitely a comp I have not seen them play yet. Interesting to like see starting, what they're up to. Yeah, it looks like they're Every starting to test out a couple of those different stronger. heroes and some different team compositions, which is definitely surprising. But at the same time, with how these games have been going, I think it'll work pretty well. I think, yeah. I think Ohio University is going to really struggle to find a comp that doesn't work for them at this current game right now. Yeah, and it looks like they're just going to try to hold this. Uh, it's not a huge choke point, but this it's corner, corner right here. And is, it provides yeah. cover, and that's all you really need to make it a choke. Yep, that's enough for a choke point for Ohio University, it seems. And we see the payloads starting to get a little bit closer, but they're definitely holding the ground. High University really actually not playing too aggressive we've seen. Maybe it was just a tale of the time and how they're just waiting to really kind of feel out the other team and maybe just kind of get on a roll as they are. But they are going to play around this corner. Bastion ready to just melt someone as he does right there. He's bring Soldier really low right there. And now this, this is the point where this fight is just going to go into it. Like, overtime as Akusor just gets butt. Mercy, Mercy gets targeted, then goes for the Ana. Ana does not have Sleep or Andy to really help her out. And doesn't look like anyone on the team was really cognizant of her going down. Akusor does go down to a Soldier. Fifth pick of the game for um, Northern Kentucky University. We do see the Torb come out from Kuna. Does he have Golden? Uh, if he doesn't have Golden Hammer, I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, I don't know either. But definitely, he's gonna. I think we're going to see the turret come out on Payload or something like it. Uh, Torb turret. Oh, a little, little, little like reverse pirate ship action going on. The defense gets the pirate ship. Uh, Crazy Man G anti. We do not have a Kiriko, so these anti are going to be playing a pretty huge factor, especially if Crazy Man G is kind of in the back line as he wants, as a Doomfist wants to be, and he gets anti. It's going to be, it's going to be pretty hard for him to really come back. It's like Kuna's just watching the health of his turret. Sneaky Squid does finally get this turret down using his rapid thing. Kuna just goes down, not down, but uses his get anti. Goes immediately for the honor, so he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Trying to go for a hammer kill, unable to do so as he uses the wall climb and a jump, double jump ability to go out of there right there. Yeah, it definitely looks like the use of this Doomfist is purely for messing up the back line. We see him jumping around, going straight for healers that are focusing on these Ramad on the Aramadro for the other team. And it's it's just something else. I mean, look how crazy he is just going around and picking off every single one on his own. Yeah, he is just in there. He, he is getting pretty close to that back line, to that spawn door as it is. Yeah, it looks like we have Kuna hanging out in the back a little bit. Looks like he's going to pop out. Never mind, they flip right back up. I think it might have been a thought to see if they could get behind and try and pick off some of our healers, but more, they just might have been more towards them. Oh, are they going to do it? Oh my. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> this one? Can he get two? Can he get two? Can he get two? No, it looks like the Mercy's pocketing. And can okay. you please see your shot? He gets a double <laughs> hammer kill. A double <laughs> hammer kill against the Lincoln Kentucky University. Loki is kind of a BM for Ohio University, but maybe they're just showing that they're having fun. And granted, yeah. no NKU ain't. Yeah, it's definitely something else. At this point right now, NKU is kind of set that they're probably not going to be having the best time for the rest of this yeah, game. Yeah, I think they've they've kind of determined that eh, we're not going to This thing going to be the best fun. But Ohio University really showing they're having fun. Crazy Man G gets slept. Meteor strikes to get out. That one stings. That one stings for... Um, Northern Kentucky, they thought they had their Doomfist, who was just being such a nuisance towards them. But not anymore. We do see a Ramatra. Oh, come out. No more sleep from Nick the Ana. So we'll have to see if he. No more sleep, so that he doesn't have the ability to really put that down. But it doesn't matter. Akusora just goes full on town and gets him. Yeah, it's definitely not a struggle at this point. I mean, no. especially with that Doomfist all I feel almost kind of bad. They had him slept, and they were damaged. They had him slept. They had five people shooting at him, and they he just hit that uh, hit the key and left. He, he, he hit Q. <laughs> hit Q, exactly, yeah. Dude, uh, again going there. The Sigma pick. 
He just walked out, gets almost melted by yeah. the... We do see a sixth pick for Northern Kentucky University. Seventh pick by Northern Kentucky University on the Sneaky Squid. Brought to two health. Crazy Man G is able to get healed. He is in a position where his healers can't really, can't really get to him. Ana finally put the health there. Lando's making his way back with Transcendence. Eighth pick. Sneaky Squid is the only one who's really been getting picks. And uh, almost all of them have been headshots on yeah. that Hanzo right there. Crazy Man G finally does go down. If they just put all their focus right on there. It is overtime. High University, not in the best of situation right there. Just a sleep grenade combo on that Bastion to really get him right now. This, now the Sigma's gonna have to try to do his best what he can. But that is a he nano. Oh, he is he is ulting right in front of him. Una that ult, unable to do too much. He's still alive because thanks to the nano and the health from his team as the entire OU team focuses on, on that thing. Transcendence is top. More of just uh, making sure we're all good. High University. Again, just a dominant defensive round where they're just showing to be having a lot of fun right there. Not even, I don't, not, they're not even, I can't even say they're trying out different comps. They're just playing whatever and they're just trying to have fun. And I believe they are. Yeah, it definitely was something else. I mean, at the end, we saw NKU chart to compete a little bit. And they definitely held on there for overtime. But it really, it, was, it wasn't it enough. University really did kind of overextend a little bit. The, uh, I don't know, the pick on Doom was pretty big. Obviously, any pick on the Doom was good. But High University was able to really just play it calm, stay alive, get a couple picks, especially use the Nano on the Bastion, and they were able to just clear point. I think wait, OU's just playing good. The, the, uh, the sportsmanship might not be the best thing we're related for, but here's the clip you're seeing right there of the one hammer kill. I wonder if they were able to get both. They were not the only able to clip the first one, I believe, or only wanted to show you the first one. Lowell, both. both on the. I know we got both with the hammer. I don't know if we were able to clip both, but if we did, that'd be wonderful. I University yeah. again. The he they're 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 going the no healing route. The slow woe on the brig and Lando on the Zen, both both uh, healing over time abilities for those two. So that'll really. Yeah, it looks like we're starting to go with more of a just. We'll, we'll call it a funky comp situation. Funky Where? comp, yeah. Well, that, I guess I'll be the nicest way to put it. The uh, just whoever, whoever you yeah. want to play, just get out there, see what we can do. It looks like they're just playing for fun, like you were saying. Uh, they're just having a good time. Mm, it's true. This is the last map Ohio University needs to win. Is a best of five situation. First one to win three. We're a little visual glitch from uh, Kuna right there, as we see. Uh, we lose that quickly. No picks from high uh, University just yet, but not without attempt. It's crazy, man. Geez, quick to get their Aquasora on the pick. On uh, Dextron, Mari brings it back up. There are the first pick on Aquasora right now. He gets it, but Lando finishes it off. Sigma gets caught in the trap. Kill right there. Mercy looks like she's going for a red. I'm not quite sure where was she was. She hitting. was contesting on point. Contesting. Uh, that is yeah. true. I was. I was not. I wasn't like, cognizant of the fact that it was that close. 33 minutes, 42 seconds. That's how long it took to get the stream going. Get the, get the that going for Ohio University to beat Northern Kentucky University. Yeah, that oh, was something else. We, we get the play of the game tonight from Crazy Man G instead of the true play of the game, the double hammer kill by Kuna. Yeah. That's truly, truly a waste of a play of the game right there. I was yeah, really hoping for the double kill. I think, I think, I think everyone. It's the people's play of the game. Yeah, the people want to miss the double kill, not the game's play of the game. Well, that's three. Ohio University won. Addison, do you have something to say? Uh, not really. I mean, there isn't too much to reflect for Ohio University, I don't think. They definitely brought out really well and uh, played really well, too. So I mean, they, they played great. They won with ease, and they had fun doing it. I know I sound like a bitty coach, but having fun having fun doing anything is always a good thing. Yeah, it definitely is, and especially with the characters they were playing. We could see them later on in a comp, too. That's true. But it was it was a good game. Good game for Ohio, good game. Ohio University shown pure dominance in the week two of the ESC. And um, see you next week for week three when they play whoever they play. Yeah.